I'm joined now by Nason Makmubi. He's an analyst specializing in Asia studies and China-related affairs. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Elaine. Let's uh, take a look at today's visit by State Councilor Yang Jiechi to the White House and to Capitol Hill. The DPRK is still a major topic, but he was supposed to meet with people of influence like House Speaker Paul Ryan and H.R. McMaster. What do you think the goal was here? So from my vantage point, I think probably uh, State Councilor Yang Jiechi uh, on behalf of the Chinese government is just trying to get a read on the temperature in Washington. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff in the last five months since this new administration has come into power, a lot of different signals, uh, both with respect to China and with respect to other parts of the world. Uh, and so this seems like a very savvy move to meet with uh, Bob Corker, chairman of the Foreign Relations Commission uh, Committee, uh, Paul Ryan, and of course, uh, General McMaster at the White House. Let's look at the inaugural diplomatic and security dialogue. Do you think there has been any progress at all of key issues? We heard from the State Department, the U.S. side on the DPRK, and we also heard what the Chinese Foreign Ministry said. It still appears that there are some major differences as to the philosophy, philosophy of handling the DPRK. So it seems as if on substance there was no major breakthrough. Um, the basic positions of each side are are clear and they don't seem to have changed much um, from what's being reported about these meetings. But the process has changed. Uh, this uh, strategic uh, dialogue is different from the dialogue that was initiated under the Obama administration. Uh, it's smaller, it's higher level. Um, in theory, it can produce more frank exchange of views. Um, and given that it's the principles at the table, uh, you know, Mattis and Tillerson and Yang Jiechi, uh, Feng Fenghui, um, that could potentially lead to uh, more cooperation down the road. But this is the first one that's been held, so we'll have to see how it plays out. And so that being said, given what ha is happening on the Korean Peninsula and the reports of movement on the DPRK mm. side, uh, do you think a meeting like this could enable both sides here to act quickly if something happens? I suppose that could be the, you know, the U.S.-China relationship is so complex. There's so many different pieces of it. Um, and different kinds of meetings are probably suited for different parts of the relationship. But for something that is as charged and as fast moving and as sensitive as what's happening in North Korea, um, it could be that having meetings like this um, can facilitate better uh, responses. But again, um, there doesn't seem to have been a major breakthrough in this meeting, at least as it's been publicly reported. Uh, so it's hard to know if. And, and we'll have to just kind of see, but it's hard to know at this moment that this meeting produced the desired result for either side. And given what the new president of the ROK, uh, what his philosophy is in mm -hmm. handling the DPRK, he's visiting Washington one week from today. Do you think he can bring the U.S. side to coming around and seeing this from their point of view? Right. So both uh, the Chinese and the new president of South Korea, um, they seem to be putting pressure on Washington to uh, consider a freeze on military exercises to ratchet down the military and economic pressure in North Korea as a vehicle towards restarting talks. But um, on the U.S. side, there's a great deal of reluctance to do that. There's um, history of uh, having had an experience like this in 94 under the Clinton administration, again at the end of the Bush administration, getting back to the table and then having those um, understandings be flouted by the North Koreans uh, very shortly thereafter. So there's a deep reluctance um, in Washington. I guess we're all watching this in real time. I think the problem is it's hard to know what the next set of moves are available to the U.S. So there may be a sense of being backed in a bit of a corner right now. All right, Nason Makmubi, thank you for joining us from Philadelphia.